Hey everybody, Chris Coast here and welcome to another video. This video is all about 10 words that I think you mispronounce. And I don't know you personally, we've never met probably, right? Because there's a lot of you who watch these videos, but uh, these are 10 words that I hear a lot of people mispronounce. And if you look at these words, it's kind of like, well, Chris, maybe you mispronounced them, right? <laughs> And I understand what you're saying. Like, I understand that it looks like we should say it differently, but American English speakers and most native English speakers, native English speakers in the world, pronounce them the way that I'm going to show you in this video. So get ready. Recently, I had the chance to go to Serbia and Russia and meet some of the people who watch these videos. And it was so great. And one of the things that I understood was that I should make more content about accent, pronunciation, and things that are related to speaking. So if you like that idea, go ahead and press like. But in this video, I'm going to talk about pronunciation. The first word that I hear a lot of people mispronounce is the word fruit. <laughs> now, there's two reasons why I think people mispronounce this, probably because the combination of the letters U and I, well, many people see this and they say we, not just ooh. So in English, we don't need to say we, just ooh. We say fruit, fruit. Now, the second reason a lot of people mispronounce this is because they want to say fruits. Typically in English, we're going to just say fruit. And it's kind of strange because there's another word that a lot of people mispronounce, which is vegetable. And we usually say vegetables when we're talking about a lot of them. But with the word fruit, we typically just say fruit. And when we say fruits, which we don't say very often, this means that we're talking about different types of fruit. So typically the phrase goes fruit and vegetables. This is what most people say. Now, if you say it differently, will people not understand you? No, 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 they'll understand you. They'll understand you just fine. So it's not a critical mistake, as I like to say, but it does sound a little different from how people say these things in most places where people speak English. That doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that it's different from how lots of people say it. The second word that a lot of people mispronounce is the word chaos. That's right, it's pronounced chaos. And it's probably because in some languages, when we use this word, the word is almost the same, and just one or two sounds have been changed. This word actually comes from Greek, Old Greek. And so maybe this first combination of sounds, C and H, maybe in your language, this makes a different sound. Maybe it was changed from Greek to your language and has a different sound there. Maybe the sound H. In English, when we have a Greek word that we took and you, you can see the letter CH, usually CH from Greek words will make the sound K. In other English words, CH together makes the sound CH. And that's probably why a lot of people mispronounce it, is because when they see CH, they think, oh, it's English, so we should say CH. But no, 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 this is a Greek word that we took and we made an English word. And in Greek words, CH makes the sound K. So that's the word chaos. And we can actually make an adjective from this word, chaotic. So these are connected words. Chaos is a noun. It's a thing, the, the thing that happens around us. Maybe uh, when you go to work and you look at your desk or maybe the desktop on your computer, this is chaos, right? And how someone behaves, the things that they do, their actions might be chaotic. You can even describe your day as a chaotic day. Now, the next word that a lot of people mispronounce, and this shouldn't be a surprise because 
I hear lots and lots of people from all over the world, from different countries, mispronounce this next word. It's the word recipe. <laughs> recipe. And when we look at this word, it doesn't look like that's how we should say it, right? So it can be confusing even to young English speakers who are just reading this word. They might know that the word recipe has a certain meaning, but when they read and they see this word, they might say something wrong like recipe, right? But that's not correct. So quickly they learn that this is how to write the word recipe. So it looks a lot different than how it's written. And this is confusing for everybody involved, native speakers and non-native speakers, whatever that means. So the word is recipe. And what does this word mean? Well, a recipe is a set of instructions of how to do something. Today, people might go to YouTube and write how to, and then the thing that they want to learn how to do. Like, if you write how to speak English, then you'll probably find my English Everyday program where every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, you can just speak with me and other native speakers and with friendly students from all around the world. So if you Google how to speak English, then you'll find this program called English Every Day. But if you Google how to bake a cake, then you need to choose a type of cake. And this special type of cake has special instructions about how to make it. Well, that's called a recipe, right? A recipe is not something that a doctor gives you. It's not about medicine. It's about cooking food, usually. Okay, the next word that we need to talk about is the word chocolate. That's right, it's called chocolate. And that means it has two syllables, chocolate, chocolate. There's two sounds, right? Uh, two parts of this word. I hear people mispronounce this word for a couple different reasons. First of all, people see it and they think that there should be three sounds. They think it's chocolate or chocolate. Both of these are wrong. It's just chocolate. Now, you've probably seen this with some other English words where we take out the middle syllable and just push the other two together. In some versions of English, this is clearer than in others. And there are different words where we do this in different, uh, in different accents and different dialects of English. So in American English, it's always chocolate. And the second reason a lot of people mispronounce this word is because of CH at the beginning of the word again. Now here, it is pronounced CH, like in an English word. But this is not an English word. This is a French word. And if you know anything about French or pronouncing French words in English, then you know that usually in French words, CH makes the sound SH, like in the word chauffeur, like a person who uh, drives a car. In English, we usually say chauffeur, a chauffeur, a driver of a car, a professional driver, right? Or there are many other cases where uh, French words that start with the word with the letters ch become sh in English, but not in this word. No, in this word it stays ch like in an English word. So it's chocolate, probably because English people mispronounced this French word in the past. Okay, the next word that we need to talk about is a type of nut. It's the word almond, and. This might sound a lot different from what you imagine it should sound like in your mind when you read this word on the screen. But the pronunciation is almond, almond. There are a couple different ways that people might mispronounce this word or they might pronounce it differently. So first of all, we don't pronounce L. This is what most native speakers say. They don't pronounce L, they don't say almond. But sometimes some people from some places might make a mistake if they don't know that it's a silent L. 
A silent L means it's an L that we don't say. So it's almond, almond. And at the end of this word, there's also the letter D. And in many versions of English, we don't pronounce this D very strongly. In fact, some people might not pronounce it at all. You might hear something like almond, or you might hear something like almond with a small sound at the end instead of this D sound. In any case, it's not going to be a hard, hard D. It's not going to be almond, right? No one will say it like that. But if you pronounce the L and if you pronounce the D, will people understand you? Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, this mispronunciation of this word isn't so bad. It's not critical. Now, earlier in this video, I told you that I went to Serbia and Russia recently, and a lot of people contacted me and said, Chris, when will you come to my country? People invited me to Malaysia, to Japan, to Argentina, to Brazil, to South Africa, to Egypt, to Morocco, and many other places too. And I just want to say that if you'd like for me to come to your country and do a conference or a seminar, like I did when I went to Serbia, then just contact our support team. You'll find their email address under this video, and we can discuss how we can make that work, okay? And I'll be happy to come to your country because I'm really interested in seeing new places and meeting new people. Now, the next word that we need to remember to pronounce correctly, and I hear a lot of people mispronounce, especially when I travel to their country, is the word jewelry jewelry and i understand why people mispronounce this word there's probably two reasons the first one is the word jewel is kind of difficult to pronounce in the first place right so a jewel is a special type of rock usually it's something that we can put into a necklace or a bracelet or a ring and when we make a ring a bracelet or a necklace now it's called jewelry so they're jewels that people can wear. And today, the word jewelry is not only about things with jewels, with special rocks like diamonds and rubies and emeralds. No, jewelry can be any of these things that we wear to look more beautiful, right? But they're things that are usually made of metal. So a necklace, a bracelet, a ring, maybe earrings, but also maybe a nose ring, a lip ring, an eyebrow ring, or even a belly button ring. I'm pointing to my stomach. Just don't, don't get scared. A belly button ring. Yeah, that's what it's called. So in English, it's kind of easy with jewelry, different types of jewelry, right? You just say the part of the body and say ring after it, and you're probably correct. So the word jewel has two syllables, two sounds, two parts, right? Jewel. But when we talk about these things that we wear on our body, we say jewelry. So we skip that middle syllable again and it becomes jewelry with two sounds. Now, if you mispronounce it and you say jewelry, what's gonna happen? Everybody will understand probably. So it's not critical, but it is important to sound like the people that you need to communicate with to make communication easier. So in that case, it's good to know that this word is pronounced jewelry. Okay, the next word that we're gonna talk about is enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Now this has a lot of syllables, right? Enthusiastic. Five syllables in this word. And I can understand why it's difficult to pronounce. I mean, look at it. When we see that written, it's like, ooh, I don't even wanna say that word. But probably this word is similar to something in your language. And enthusiastic is how you might feel when you have a lot of enthusiasm, which might be even more difficult to pronounce. So this combination of words, enthusiastic, enthusiastic. This is hard to say sometimes, just to get these letters and sounds out of our mouths, right? And into the world, uh, enthusiastic. So just repeat it a few times with me. Enthusiastic, enthusiastic. Now with words that are long like this, five syllables or maybe even longer, it's very common for us to have two stresses in the word. 
In some languages, you can only have one stress, but in English, we can have a weak stress and a strong stress. And in big words, we usually have both. So we can see that here. We go enthusiastic, enthusiastic. I'm very enthusiastic. This is so great. Okay, the eighth word that we're going to talk about today that many people mispronounce is the word world. I said the word world. Do you hear the difference between these two words? They're not two different worlds, but they are two different words. So we have to add this L sound between R and D, and it can be difficult sometimes. So the correct pronunciation of this word is world, world. So imagine that you're just saying were, like in the past, like I was and you were, and then we have to add this L sound, whirl. This is a different word. The word whirl means to go around in a circle, right? So we have were, I was, you were, whirl, d. So actually the past tense of this verb to whirl is whirled. He whirled it at me. He threw something at me in a circle. He whirled it at me. So this could be a verb, right? And this could be confusing with the word world, which is about the planet Earth. Our planet, the world. What in the world? That's how you pronounce it, world. I hope that helps. Okay, the next word that we need to talk about is photograph. Now in some countries, in some languages, the word photograph looks very similar to the word in your language for the person who takes photographs. But in English, this person is a photographer. And photograph has a different stress. And that's why a lot of people mispronounce it. We've got the word photo with O, O, not fota or something like this, right? It's photo. So you can take a photo, you can take a photograph, but if you're the person who takes photos or photographs, then you are a photographer. So here the second O changes to the sound ah, photographer. That's different. So that's how you pronounce that word. And then what are we doing here? What, what is this um, topic, the subject? It's photography. So we have photo and photograph, but photographer and photography. So we've got one word left, and thank you so much for staying with me this long in the video, because it's important to know how to pronounce words. And that doesn't mean that you're right or wrong if you pronounce them like this or you don't. What it means is that statistically, most people who are born speaking English say it this way. This is just the way that most people in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, this is how most people say it. So uh, that's what we're talking about today. So when I say that native speakers say it this way, that's what I mean. I don't mean that it's right or wrong. I just mean that if we look at the statistics of the people who live in the countries that we call English speaking countries, this is how they say it, right? Myself included. So the last word that you need to know about today is the word hotel, hotel. So this word has a soft sound at the beginning and this sound is probably a little different from the sounds that you have in your language. Maybe in your language you have the sound or or something similar to this. But in English, H is very, very soft. It's Really, you're just breathing out, just exhaling, breathing out. So it's hotel, hotel. And you might not even hear this H sound, right? It's hotel, hotel. The important part of this word is that we do not stress the O. It, it is not hotel. It's not this word. Although you can find a very funny rap song by the singer Ludacris. I like him because he has the word Chris in his name, right? And his real name is Chris. Ludacris is his name, and he has a song, 
and he mispronounces this word for a different reason, for a special reason. And I'm not going to talk about that in this video. But it's wrong to say hotel. Instead, we should say hotel, hotel. And what do you do in a hotel? You do not live in a hotel. At, at least I hope you do not live in a hotel. It's fun for the first couple days, but after a while, not so much. No, you don't live in a hotel. You stay in a hotel. Recently, I was traveling. I was in a hotel. I checked in, I registered for my room, and the lady there said, welcome, and you will live in room 1031. And I thought, I'm only here for one night. I'm not gonna live there. I'm going to stay there, <laughs> right? She made a mistake. She said to live in a hotel room. That's not what we do. We stay in a hotel room, not live. So when we talk about hotels, right, that's how we pronounce it, hotel, hotel. When we talk about staying in hotels, we should use the verb to stay, not the verb to live. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked it, press like, press subscribe, and leave a comment down below to let me know that, hey, you liked it. Another thing that you should do is you should go over to my website, chrisamericoast.com, and you should see the feedback that we have from students in over 50 languages from more than 100 countries. We have so many students from all over the world who come together to speak English every single day, and every lesson happens every hour, every day, about a new topic. So there are different teachers from different English-speaking countries who lead the lessons and different students from all around the world who come together to meet each other and to practice speaking. So if that sounds like something that would help you and you think that you might be able to speak English better if you have speaking practice any time of the day that you want, then come over and try it out. There's a special offer under this video, so if you click the link, you can go and you can find out how you can join today and get started speaking. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.